Jammin. You ever play Toe Jam and Earl? There's some good jams in Toe Jam and Earl. That's why they say jammin. Let's not even get into the, the mini game. My god, why isn't every American become equipped with a Sega Genesis on their back that they can carry around and listen to Toe Jam and Earl music with all the time? But anyway. Hey, Aliopa. I don't have to be. I'm not doing this professionally. Howdy kept silent. This is actually a lie. You're kept quite lively with our random stream times. So, uh, good news. Microsoft seems to have uh, slipped a little hint that they're moving to a subscription model for Windows into some of their code. I'm, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that because that's probably going to be when I start doing all of my writing on an unconnected Linux laptop. I already refuse to pay for Word because it's the most bloated and lousy word processing software on the market. And there's actually alternatives that are free that have more features. So until they can get their act together, they're not they're not, they're not getting any money from me. I don't know why other writers put up with it. Do they not know? Oh my god, do they not know that there's better word processors out there? Like, you can do everything that Microsoft Word can do with OpenOffice. It's, it hasn't even been updated in years. It's just a stable build. Oh god. I need to get the word out there. No. No. This is not my fight. But yeah, can you imagine what that subscription price is going to be? Like, what are you going to pay for Windows every year? Are you willing to pay $29.99 a month right after you manage to cut your cable costs by switching to an internet connection only and then getting, like, one or two streaming services that you uh, prefer? And then all of a sudden, now you're going to be spending $300 a month just because you've got, like, five big things that you have to have to make any of that work anyway? I think a lot of people won't. Just call me crazy here. Budget cuts. Budget cuts across the board. I'm in a ranting mood. I don't get in a ranting mood very much on, well, at this time of night. Although I'm sure Kept Silent can vouch for my, uh, my, <laughs> my love of ranting. It's certainly an IRL. I'm a very vocal critic about the things I read and watch and eat and... It, yeah, I, I think a Microsoft account would be at least 150 a year. It would definitely be cheaper than... So, so like, one year renting Windows would be cheaper than one year paying for a Windows license. But, but that's kind of the thing. That's how everyone's gone, where it used to be you would pay $50 for software that you would use five years. And, you know, so... It's, it's like $10 a year you've basically paid. And now you pay $5 a month, which means that after that first year, well, I mean, most of the time, in a single year, you've paid more than you normally would have paid for that software. And the worst part about it is the software doesn't get better, which means all that extra money that they get from the regular income and the higher price of a subscription service does not seem to be going back into the businesses in any significant way that affects that software. Admittedly, sometimes this is how they fund other projects, but when you're only going to a company for one product, and that's the one that your money paid for, and that money doesn't come back to improve that product, and it goes into another product that you're not going to use, a little bit of a bad business model there, because you, you don't actually have a captive audience for that new product. You, you know, unless you're like Microsoft and you try to program everything in a way that will force them to continue using your products, which, let's ask them how that worked out for them in the 90s, but moving on from that, I think all of these companies that desperately try to be monopolies are slowly learning that it's not a stable business model. Uh, yeah, and, and <laughs> we had a bit of a party at Casa del Muppi today. 
and everybody seems to finally be picking up on what I have been saying for the past 10 years in that food is changing and nobody's noticing it, or at least it's getting noticed very slowly. My brother was convinced that the cake that he ate made everything else taste funny, and I said, no, no, no. So I'm, I'm, eating, I'm eating some Fritos, and you can look at the ingredients on a bag of Fritos. It's corn, corn oil, and uh, uh, salt. And first off, the corn oil shouldn't be in there anywhere in any significant fashion. But you know what? It's their recipe. They can do what they want. But they don't taste the same. The flavor from Fritos is gone. Fritos has a very distinct flavor. Like, I don't know if you have this in every country, but Fritos have a very, very strong corn flavor. And when they taste like they're a saltine, same consistency as a Frito, but now they taste like saltines, something is wrong. And they, there's a lot of things that have shifted to this. Corn, sugar, and salt, yeah. Um, or flour. Uh, but I don't know if... I don't know what has changed in the processing of corn, corn flour, and flour. But, well, I, I guess it's, uh... Something in the processing seems to have changed the flavor. So, like, a lot of breads and crackers that uh, are coming off the shelves now that... Uh, I, can, I can specifically think of oyster crackers having a weird consistency and flavor to them now. And they are not peak cracker anymore. Uh, this, this was this was supposed to be me playing a game. And now here we are. But you know what? This is later than I usually go. So my brain is on fire, and I'm tired. And I've just come down from a whole two weeks of writing a bunch of short stories, and I can't stop thinking about weird things. It almost makes me want. Okay, let's get let's get. Let's do a conspiracy theory. I have a conspiracy theory. So, like, you remember how there was that magical disease that, uh, well, no, we're gonna call it, we're not gonna call it a magical disease. We're gonna call it a buff. So remember that buff that everyone got in, like, 2019 to present? And uh, some people had, like, higher stats to where the buff gave them an extra boost where it changed their sense of taste? My conspiracy theory of the day is that getting people used to having a changed sense of taste and telling other people about it is a precursor to all of this food changing so that everyone else will just think that, oh, my taste must have changed too. That's the wild conspiracy theory I'm gonna go with today. I think I need to, I think I need to like come up with one of these every day. That would be fun. I just talk about my plans on these uh, streams because I don't do this professionally. Yes, mass confusion. So, like, the tastes really did change, but because some people's taste on certain things changed when the actual product didn't, it makes everyone think that they have now succumbed to some kind of change, when in fact, it's just a lower quality product. I mean, it's crackers. I bake crackers at home. It's not that hard to get it right. And if, you, if you're buying packaged crackers one day and they're they're nice and fluffy and crunchy and they go well with soup and then the next day it's like I may as well have just like poured a teaspoon of flour in my soup. It's really weird. New oyster crackers taste like flour that isn't quite like like maybe if you had just taken the flour itself and not mixed it up to make crackers but just baked the flour so that it had a bit of crispness. I don't know if that actually works but if the flour itself can like burn so it's crunchy and somehow stick together in cracker form without adding water, uh, that's that's kind of what these crackers are tasting like now. It's kind of like when you get good icing on a cake and then you get that you get those cakes from stores that taste like they used some kind of industrial greaser. Uh, that seems to be what's happening with the crackers now. The Fritos thing, I don't get at all. Like, how can you screw that up? It's it's corn. But life finds a way. Do I have any other food conspiracy theories? Other than the conspiracy theory that... Well, let's see. What if they've just gotten lazier with processing and we're just getting more raw ingredients? 
I don't think that's it. I would have thought that was it with, like... So, like, let, let's jump back into the past of Old Man Muppy here and talk about Little Caesars. Little Caesars, when I was a child, and this is... This is one of those cases where it's like, this is not nostalgia. They were legitimately a fantastic pizza place that people love to go to. And this one's going to blow your mind if you're, uh, if you're you know, uh, a 2000s child. But they used to cook all of their food fresh. And they used to actually finish cooking their breadsticks. And they used to have really strong Parmesan and butter flavor on their breadsticks. And now you just get like that hint of something. It, it, it's almost as if someone found a way to dip a little Parmesan in butter and spread it over breadsticks. And then they just have like a little like perfume spray bottle that they spray on it to give it just that hint of actual flavor. But every single thing that Little Caesars makes now, they, they it tastes watered down. Their sauce doesn't taste right. They're... I mean, their pizzas are just sitting under an oven for the most part, and even when you get them fresh now, they don't taste the same. Probably because of whatever's being done with flour in these processing plants. Um, I think the breadsticks, it would be nice if they did finish cooking them. They're, they're still okay, but you have to bring them home and put them in your oven, which kind of kind of ruins the point of them trying to do this whole fast food, non-sit-down restaurant thing. Uh, Little Caesars used to have some sit-down restaurants, I know that. Uh, same with same with Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut used to have sit-down restaurants, and that only... God, I think the last Pizza Hut... The last Pizza Hut that had a sit-down restaurant near me actually was still around up until, like, probably... Well, probably 2020, <laughs> for reasons that will remain obvious. Uh, for the, uh, the stat boosts. So, I think, I think that's it, other than, I think I can, I think I can get one more out of this. So, I had an episode recently where I was talking with a friend, once again, about pizza. Can you tell I'm hungry? We were talking about pizza, and I brought up what I was calling the Little Caesars Bigfoot Pizza. Because my whole life I have gone thinking that Little Caesars was the ones that made Bigfoot Pizza. And in the middle of this conversation, my brother informs me that he had just been in his own conversation where someone had pointed out to him that no, that is actually a Pizza Hut pizza. Now to get an idea of where this confusion can come from, there was simultaneously a pizza place called Bigfoot Pizza at the same time as there was Pizza Hut's Bigfoot Pizza. Pizza Hut's Bigfoot Pizza, which was a monster pizza that we would get for parties and it would come in this paper wrapping, and uh, this was like a, what was this, a early 90s, late 80s thing? Uh, this, this pizza came in wrapping that was orange and white. So I guess as a little tyke, I had just made that connection that it was Little Caesars, because Little Caesars colors were always orange and white. So my whole life I was calling Pizza Hut's Bigfoot Pizza the Little Caesars Bigfoot Pizza. Now add to that confusion that we also had a pizza back in the day that was the Little Caesars, uh, what was it, six, it was, I think it was a six foot pizza that they would deliver in this really long box. I don't even know how the deliver pe delivery people fit it in their cars because I'm pretty sure they had their own vehicles. They didn't have like the special, uh, the special Little Caesars uh, delivery truck or anything that had a six foot spot in it for a pizza. I'm pretty sure it was six foot. It might've been three foot, but, but the whole point is I was so sure that it was the Little Caesars Bigfoot Pizza that I went online looking, and apparently I was not the only one. It was this massive Mandela effect that a lot of people had, where I would go onto forums and I would find a bunch of people that were like, that was Little Caesars, why is everyone saying that's Pizza Hut? I, I even looked up the commercial and I remembered the monster truck commercial for, I think it was the Bigfoot Pizza that had the monster truck in the commercial. But... I'm pretty convinced 
that this is not a Mandela effect, that something happened back when they fired up the Large Hadron Colliders, and Pizza Hut is somehow a sponsor of CERN in some way that we will discover in the future. And they used that power to go back in time and take over the Little Caesars Bigfoot Pizza. I, I, I need to work on that one, but I think that one would be a fun and funny conspiracy theory. Uh, I, I think it would be better if we could somehow tie this in with like a Steins Gate thing and, and have like the Pizza Hut Little Caesars version of Steins Gate. You know, you've got the Reading Steiner, they've got the Little Caesar. It could work. Putting that all aside though, I think it's time to eat pizza. So I'm just going to close the stream. And, no, I'm just kidding. Anyway. Why did I start this talking about Toe Jam Girl? I don't even remember. But, since I don't have Korinik here to, uh, to boost the com- Yes, I know, I'm trying to make you hungry. I'll be starting my Mupp Pizza uh, franchise shortly after this, so uh, it's a good segue into that. The Muppiest, the Heingardiest. Heingart. Heingart Pizza. Will that work? Don't want to call it Heinies. That wouldn't go over well. Nobody wants to eat Heinies pizza. Mupp Pizza kind of sounds too pretentious. Muppy Pies. That. No, that doesn't work. Oh, this is not a good name for pizza. Hmm. Well, at any rate, I brought a little something different. So this is... Uh, it's kind of funny. Apparently, according to Twitch, there's zero interest in this game. It's apparently completely unknown, and yet it came up in their database. Or rather, zero people following it. It's a mad princess. It's a game with it. Heinzgate, that's great. I think I would be sued by the ketchup people, though. Pretty sure that wouldn't go over well with them. One of these days I'm going to have to tell people how I eat pizza so, so that I can ensure that they will never ever buy pizza from my restaurant. At any rate, this is, uh, this is this is the one that is kind of. So there's a funny story to this game. This game is about a. Okay, well let's let's start at the beginning. I found this game on DL site. Now I may have mentioned this before, but I am not into hentai games, and I'm certainly not going to stream one. Oh yeah, you know how I eat my pizza, but you've seen it. Yeah, so, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stream. Uh, hentai games. No, I don't even play them. But, I love DL site because they've got a whole bunch of weird games that don't necessarily make it to other platforms. And they have a, a non-adult section. So they have an all-ages section. And when I first ran across this one, I was sure that it was not in the all-ages section. But I couldn't find the, the thing that said it was 18+, plus, so I investigated, and sure enough, this is a... This is an, it's under all ages, but listen to this premise and tell me that you wouldn't have thought this was a hentai game. So you play as a gladiator who is in the tutorial part of the game. Uh, you're working to impress the crowd so that someone will buy you. And after that, you are then working as a gladiator in the arena to raise enough money to purchase your freedom from slavery. Now, if that isn't a premise for a hentai game, I don't know what is. But, I mean, I, I checked out a couple of minutes of it, and there's, you know, apart from it, you know, outright saying it's for all ages, it doesn't seem to really go to any hentai direction. So, uh, 
hopefully that's true. I'm pretty sure it wouldn't have been in the All Ages section if it wasn't for, you know, sometimes things slip past. Which is the appropriate way to word that if <laughs> you're talking about wondering whether or not. Let, let's, let's play the game. Alright, we're going to start new. Story does not change with difficulty. We'll go normal. Enter a name. Well, we don't want to go with just Muppy. We want to. We want to have some fun here. So, I'm not the hentai. I'm the hempai. Call me hempai. And if you've known me for more than five minutes, you know that I am definitely going to pick this model. An empire, the peak of prosperity. Cities with large populations, governance was carried out by means of policy and turnouts. You don't have to spell things correctly when you're on the outside. They make Android games too, feel better than the mobile games. Or they're just a bunch of chemicals and an endless stream of vomit. Oh, the game is loud. Oh, we can fix that. Oh, yeah, that is coming in pretty loud. Okay. Let's, uh... Let's drop this back a bit. Jeez. It shouldn't be loud where I've got it, but I guess... I guess we'll try this. That is... That might be too low. Oh, I'm gonna run with it. I'm not so sure it's a game that needs intense sound. I mean, look at it. I love my indie games. So we've got these uh, peaceful beasts becoming violent and attacking humans. So the obvious thing to do... Put them in events where humans bludgeon them to death in an arena. I love the idea that a riot would break out if people weren't entertained in the Colosseum. That sounds very, very Rome. Hempai is a criminal. We don't want to know of what. Uh, let's, let's meet the, ex, the spectator's expectations. Alright, so we've got Indie Pixel Blob here. Pretty cool design. Vera. Yo, Hempai, sup? We're going to be sleeping in this water-drippy cafeteria. Okay, so the training grounds are the prisons. Uh, this is actually a kind of strategy, uh, m I think, management game? You have to kind of uh, collect resources and use skills appropriately in battle. It's pretty simple. It's, uh, we'll get started pretty quick. First match tomorrow. Let's take a nap. Sleep. Okay, so they're giving us one option to start. They're not giving us the Cobra Think option. Alright, day one seems to have gone very well. I swear I've heard this music somewhere. Alright, we're not allowed to go any further than this antechamber from our cell. I guess that means that all the prisoners can kind of meet up and hang around? Imperial soldiers decked out in armor. Ten odd convicts waiting their battle. Vera jogs up to you. Oh, oh, oh. See me? I'm Vera. <laughs> We're up against a beast. Okay. Why don't we just go back to prison? Oh, 
we've got the Venator event, and the Bestiary event. I'm assuming this is the one we want to go with first. Alright, so we're going to normal attack it, because having played this for a few minutes, I know that there's a trick to this. We also want to get our defense up. I apparently forgot that trick. Alright, so we got another rabbit here. Yeah, let's go with an armor guard. And we've got time, we'll do a full body attack here. Alright. We got 83 popcorn balls as a reward. So I suspect we could go back to the antechamber, but I think we can do the bestiary event. I screwed this up last time, so let's find out if I'm wrong. Defend. Do a full body attack. Okay, we can't see any stats. Does he do anything with this? No. Okay. Normal attack. And then we'll just pick this guy off. Okay, so we don't get to select which target we have either. I guess we've got to risk a full body attack there, get that guy out of the way. Normal attack. Defend. Normal attack. Normal attack. Normal attack. Okay, another full body attack. I hope this works. Uh, fear and Hunger, yes, you actually did tell me about Fear and Hunger, and I uh, I actually bought it. I have not played it yet. Oh, I did not get the... So, so I got attacked by like 10 ants at once the first time I played this, and I didn't know what to do about that, so I got a game over instantly, so I guess we got through it this time. I guess we just return to the prison cell and get some sleep. It, this doesn't actually seem much like a life of gladiating slavery. Yes, I do still want to play that Michigan horror game you found. I'm a bit disappointed that it doesn't actually take place in Michigan. There are plenty of horrors to have in Michigan. little bit of Michigan lore time. I don't know if I mentioned this before, uh, but it's simultaneously a very boring state because we don't get a lot of things like, like a lot of the concerts that come from overseas that I would like to see, hardly any of them pass through Michigan. They'll go to New York on the East Coast or they'll, uh, they'll, they'll go to uh, Los Angeles or Las Vegas, they'll be on the West Coast. And sometimes they'll even pop down in the Midwest areas, in Ohio. They'll be in Chicago. Uh, a lot of times they pass through Detroit and don't bother for reasons that I fully understand. Now, what does Anna Lee have to tell us? Anna Lee looks like a robot. Either that or she has been crying a lot. I am the new kid. I am, but you're going to call me Henpai. You converse with Anna Lee for a while. That's right, we compare shoes. She is also a convict, locked up in this prison. Sort of. It's actually a really good character design. I like these characters. <laughs> She's been in jail for three years and approaches you ready to box. But yeah, Michigan is, uh... Well, no, there's just, like, the venues in Detroit... 
apart from being stinky. Um, I don't know, there's... People will go to them. I mean, they'll, they'll usually sell out. But it's a big hassle to do anything in that area because there's usually more than one event going on. The traffic isn't very good. The city is designed by someone that was allowed to design something at some point. But we, we miss a lot of that stuff. We don't we don't get a lot of conventions, and the ones we do get are the smaller ones that aren't... Like, there's most of the time smaller, especially anime conventions, are really good. But we tend to get the small ones that grow really quickly, and then they kind of stagnate, and then they start, you know, doing things that make it seem like they're losing money. So we, we don't get too much. On the other hand, there's something wonderful about Michigan that most people don't know. And apart from the, the, uh, the occasional uh, beating we take from snow in the winter, which doesn't happen very often anymore, we get zero earthquakes, almost no tornadoes. No hurricanes, obviously. We have no real poison insects that anyone worries about. No real deadly animals, except for, like, if you really, really look really, really hard, you can find bears in the forestry in mid and northern Michigan. But, I mean, you've, you've really got to be looking, so you're not likely to get mauled by a bear. Uh, you know, we don't, we don't have anything like wolves. We have coyotes that don't bother anyone. Uh... There's just... It, this is probably the safest place in the world, natural disaster-wise. Even being surrounded by the Great Lakes, we have almost no disasters. And it, it's just like one of them things where people from Michigan watch the news and it feels like fiction. But anyway, we're getting mad at princesses. Uh, Detroit Comic Con, by the way, is not bad. It doesn't usually take place in Detroit, if I'm remembering correctly. It takes place in the city of Novi, which is a um, it's a heavily Japanese populated city uh, that has a lot of my favorite Japanese restaurants in the area and a lot of world markets and they uh, it's a horrible city to travel to because the traffic causes... There, there's a there's a wide, wide road for getting in and out of Novi, but then they narrow all the roads within Novi, so the traffic is horrendous on busy days. And trying to get there sometimes, you just can't even get down the freeway. You, you can't get over into the lanes you need to. And, you know, we're talking Michigan drivers. Like, the people that drive in Michigan from other states are just terrified most of the time because they they've never really... They've never seen the aggressive Michigan driver before. Uh, we lose our minds when we go to places like New York because New York is just a standstill and everyone in Michigan is constantly swerving in and out of everyone else's way or they're like me and they drive like an old granny so they're just like getting angry at the people swerving in and out of the way and seriously considering slamming on the brakes in front of them. Um, oh yeah, Novi well Novi's a sister city for... Was it Novi? No, I'm thinking of... I'm thinking of Ann Arbor. Ann Arbor is a sister city. But Novi does have a large Japanese population. I, I'm i trying to remember. I think they might have been a sister city as well for... Oh, God. Was it somewhere near Lake Biwa? I think I only know that because I had friends that used to teach in Japan and they had... Uh, they had done this thing where they recorded a... They, they sang the some kind of anthem for Lake Biwa or something that I have on a CD somewhere that I haven't listened to in a long time. Or maybe maybe it's just part of uh, Novi had, a, had an exchange thing. We are totally not playing this game, are we? <laughs> but that's okay, this is fun. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm not... I used to know why there was such a heavy population there. I can't remember now. I know there's a lot of Japanese companies that have a presence there. I know that a lot of uh, the schools there, um, they, they, they do a lot of events every year where they'll have uh, Japan Day or Asian Festival Day or the, the elementary schools will have, um, I forget which group sponsors it, 
um, the the Japanese language group that is it TOEFL T O E F L. I'm not sure if it's them, but there, there's like a sponsorship event they do where they try to get people interested in taking you know. Uh, going to Japan as tourists. They do some exchange programs through there. Uh, I think Novi hosts some of the JLPT kanji tests. I know Ann Arbor does. But yeah, if you go to like Ten Mile and Grand River, there's a bunch of uh, places near there that... Uh, it's, it, there's a lot of Japanese people that live there. And so there's, there's a lot of Japanese restaurants as well. Lots of uh, businesses. It's probably much better than being a prisoner and a gladiator. Anyway. Uh, let's see. So apparently for a period of time today, merchants and nobles as well as craftsmen are allowed to enter the antechamber for trading purposes. Okay, so we're we're mixing the, uh, the merchant class with the prisoner class. This always ends well in any society. Lapia ain't so bad, really. That is, if you're confident in your skills. I'm confident. <laughs> it's all so happy. I mean, I mean, you're going out to possibly die against beasts and everyone's just like, yeah, this is pretty good. See me? I'm still Vera. She's the highest earner in the prison. Well, yeah, she looks like she's made of steel. She looks like a robot. Even though Annalie is a prisoner, people call her a gladiator. I thought we were gladiators. Oh, she, she's earned her way to the camp. I don't know if I trust someone sending me directly from a prison to a camp, but there it is. Okay, let's trade. I have zero popcorn balls, and nobody actually has anything to trade. We've got a healer. Oh, I can get healing stuff. Why is the premium HP? Oh, wait a minute. What does the 30 mean? List price 30,000 gold. What are the... Is that how many you get? And is this... Are these G's? Are they Gopcorn balls? No. Oh, I don't have any money. Purchase equipment? Okay, so it is gold. Alright, I guess we get one option and one option only. Return to prison cell. Okay. Nothing new yet. Let's Venator event. Venator event? Veniatory event? Blah. Defend, armor guard. Are so good. Three rabbits. This is not like the last time I played at all. I must have been really unlucky. Uh, who's my target? The snail? Well, we know that he'll go down with a full body attack, so. Now let's try it on the snail. Oh, he's a weakling. Oh, here we go. Here's the ass. Okay. Let's see if this works. So I was out of barrage the first time, and so they just pummeled me to death. I thought barrage did more than one target, but I guess not. 
Check it out, 540. I believe they said that we could get armor perfect for ourselves for 500. Lay it on me. What is this? Reset CT of all skills except this skill. That does sound better, but that's a lower defense, but it, who knows. Pants. Can I look at my equipment? How do I do this? I guess not. Again. Day four. We're on a quest. Our quest is to get ourselves a Bigfoot pizza. One girl with a giant rucksack on her back. Oh man, are we gonna be about to get another pixelated character? Oh, look at that. Do they even... I'm just going to point out that we are all prisoners. I, I understand that there might be a little bit of a reason to not necessarily trust us. With, you know, having an eight-year-old girl that's probably carrying stuff to trade on, in a backpack. But I guess there are heavily armed guards all around, so maybe this is just like cosplay for her. Welcome to prison, Thelma. She is. She's a skilled merchant. I knew it. Skilled. Wait, wait. That's not a. That's not what a merchant does. That's a. That's what a grave dig. Not even a grave digger. A grave robber. She's a grave robber. Oh, okay, that makes it okay. It actually does. Why would you sign that, though? Like, what do they get in return? Do they do they get money to buy the equipment that you you take from corpses? Interesting deal. So there's like no way you lose in this. I'm torn. I want to sign the funny contract, but I also I, I also feel like I should take a stance against eight-year-olds grave robbing. Let's do it. Oh my god, I just realized I gave her a reason to try and get me killed. This is the worst insurance policy ever. She, she's gonna wander into another room, pull out a cigarette, and be like, Hey, we got another one. Another sucker born every minute. Send out the ants. Hey, right, well, what are we gonna purchase?
Ha, who's the fool now? Oh, that's a two-handed sword. So we don't have a shield anymore. Hundred and fifty HP, seven hundred, twenty-four hundred. I'll take one of those. Oh, that's how many they have in stock. I don't even have that much. Get out of there. Let's, let's see if we can get more equipment. Oh, I feel like I lost out on that one. Now oh, let's take it. Maybe it can be upgraded. All right, let's save the rest of our funds. And let's see, let's see what we've got out in the land of fighting. I still don't know what this traitor thing means. It deals half your normal damage to all enemies. That's useful. Thrice your normal damage. Normal damage and knocks enemy over. Okay. Well, let's see how uh, let's see how strong our normal attack is now. Oh, that's nice. So this must be a stun. Yep, that works. Oh, what did we find? A seed from one of those trees. It covers five HP. That one. Okay, so it's got a four count cooldown. Can we switch targets when we? There's no way to switch targets. That's that's kind of a bummer. It kind of makes the knockdown pointless. Here we go. This is what destroyed me last time. But now we have a smooth sweep. Half normal damage to all enemies. Let's see what we get out of this. That didn't seem like all enemies. Well, it did not save our hide. I wasn't defending, was I? I forgot again. This game over, courtesy M. Bison. Yep, we, we've seen Thelma. sign that contract. Alright, let's better outfit ourselves this time. So we'll take that. We'll take the bronze spear. I guess this is all in order? Looks like we're getting the same stuff. Take the leather glove. And time leap. What is this? Let's, uh, let's do it. Okay, we got one more. This doesn't improve our situation a bit. What do we do with the bronze spear? 
Let's give it a try. Alright, so we've got that wide sweep again. A third of damage to all enemies. Twice normal damage to a target and surrounding enemies. That's useful. Negates target's defense. Divide for the enemies, that's why it wasn't hitting all of them. I feel like that didn't help very much. Stratomagizing. This is on normal mode. I'm terrible at this game. Da da da, girl with rucksack, da 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 da. Look at that hoodie, that is just wonderful. dying because I signed the contract. Maybe I was right. Maybe this is a, a grift. You know what? Let's try not signing it this time. Or maybe she was totally legit and now she's just like, okay, good luck in the arena. Thelma, air quote, respects your decision. We need to beat a hasty retreat. Well, that is just hilarious. <laughs> and you lose your turn. I love it. Can I really do this? not see this before. How do I... I'm an idiot. I can't believe that worked.
First aid. Recovers 70% of damage taken in previous turn. Enhance that equipment. Alright, how do I switch those skills? I'm supposed to know? I don't think there is. Okay. Well, I guess I'm not getting any switcheroo up from that. Let's, let's go to sleep. We've almost leveled up. Okay, is this a boss character? Shanna exits the arena, bathed in the spectators' cheers and applause, and copious amounts of rabbit blood. Or not. Tybo. Your expression does not change. Maybe she's a robot, too. Why did she come in here? Is that an interview? Well, here we go. Here goes, let's try this again. And a one, and two, and a three. Sure, I'll take one of them. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. Alright, now we've got the first aid skill. Allegedly. Yep, there we go. Shanna's in the antechamber. There is no one around because she has killed them all. Sup. Oh, I'm new. Ah, that would be a cursed sword. Backing away. But it's just so fun. Huh? Lady. I guess so. So there's a friendship element to this game, I guess. Well, let's keep killing rabbits. I'd say that went well. Why is it so hard to kill ants? choice of equipping the new armor I get or using it to enhance my last arm. Who's going to want me to kill them today? Oh, nobody. Okay.
Easy peasy. Goodbye, snail. Oh, we're multi snailing today. character here. Actually, that would be Vera, wouldn't it? An unfamiliar figure. The conversation is not going well. He's got a Canadian maple leaf on his face. Everyone's just barraging all the time. Uh-oh, that means they're out rioting. If the, if the seats are empty, they're out rioting. <laughs> Hempai fights well. That's right. This might be my new go-to game in game in name in games. That's all, folks. Homer does not let her declaration go. Is that so large? This is like remixed Umi Umineko music. I don't know, I think everything's okay. Leave a few bolts behind. Strange expression. No, that's her normal expression. But that, that's literally what they're doing. It's a death match. At least half of them are killing themselves. Just just by... Okay. You'll pray for me. God's not going to listen to you. You're a robot. Alright. Well, if I'm going to my death... Oh, I'm taking the bronze mace. What is this? This beauty. Normal attacks. Thrice normal damage. To enemies with reduced HP. Okay. We're gonna fight this death match with a mace. Do I have to do it? Maybe I don't have to do it.
thought this might happen. Fashion Kempai clear. Well, I wonder if we can handle the gladiator rank battle. All right, Basil. Let's see what you got. Dinner for you, Basil. Welcome to Faulty Towers, where it's all your fault. <sighs> Gonna do the death match. I guess I should have expected this. Gotta survive one more. That didn't survive. What game you play in that has fake pickups? God, I wish I could remember the name of that movie with the grenade that says pick me up and and the people keep picking it up and vanishing. Lords of the Fallen. I'll have to check it out. I love checking out new games that I see people playing, or hear about them playing. Alright, well, we tried the deathmatch, and that didn't go so well. So, uh, yeah, that's that's Mad Princess. There's, I mean, there's not much more to it than that. It looks like, a, it looks like what a mobile game might look like if it was a really good mobile game. And, uh... I don't know, I don't know if I'll actually do this one again. It's kind of a one-off. But... Hmm. Who knows? The deed is done. I'll get back to Grandia HD next time. This is the kind of game that I can just sit here and chill for like two hours playing without thinking about anything. I got another game like that. Ah, uh, jeez, what's it called? Interesting game. So, there's a, there's a card game I bought, like, six years ago at a convention called Heart of Crown. And this was... might have been more than six years now. Uh, this was a game that there were so many cards in it. Or rather, it wasn't that there were so many cards, but there were five different categories of card. All that had to be separated to play the game 
but all of which got mixed up during the gameplay, which made it harder to reshuffle decks when you had to. And not only that, but the placement and usage of cards also made it so that actually playing the game was like a nightmare of uh, figuring out, you know, where cards had been placed on the board. It was just very time-consuming to get it set up, and just as time-consuming to play it card-wise. But then a year later they released a video game version of it, and it was much better because of that, because the cards kind of moved automatically. It was called Heart of Crown. So you, uh, you'll probably get a glimpse of that in the future. And anyway, uh, with the music playing here, we uh, get to ask ourselves a question. Or did I... I closed the file. Why would I close the file? I'm going to reopen the file. There we go. That's how that's supposed to go. Was this why I brought up Toe Jam and Earl? It doesn't actually sound like Toe Jam and Earl music. They were specifically funky. So what did I learn today? I learned that I like pizza. Was that it? Something about food flavors changing. I think it was just the pizza, really. I really, really like pizza. I learned how to kill ants. I learned that wild boars are the easy takedowns, not rabbits. Rabbits are actually difficult. You would think that it would be otherwise. I learned that Mad Princess doesn't give you too good of an indication of what you're going to be able to handle or not, so you kind of just got to play it and figure it out. And I learned about Lords of the Fallen. That actually sounds pretty interesting. A mechanic where you pick up items that kill you. I don't know if, uh... I don't know if... I don't remember if I ever actually did this in the game, but I know that... In Oblivion, if you were a good pickpocket, you could put poisoned food into characters' pockets, and almost immediately after you would do that, they would decide that they were hungry, and they would eat the poisoned food, and then they would die. It was, uh, it was a fun little mechanic. So that's what we learned today. We learned that the Sega Genesis is a great system, without actually playing any Sega Genesis games. I'm going to go eat pizza.